temperatures up to 44 degrees from uh, 22 this morning. We're losing our window uh, of opportunity to uh, swing because undergrowth uh, stemmy weeds and stuff are starting to grow. We're, we're the third week in April and uh, stuff's coming in. So I'm driving up this, this uh, state forest road on uh, my pickup, I got my, I got my digging dog Mac with me, and we are headed to um, what's known as the Klondike Mine. I don't know when it started or when it shut down, but I imagine it was in the early 1900s that it shot, shut down. Um, I used some lidar uh, imagery and mapping to locate um, some cellar holes and so we're heading out uh, if this is your first time at the channel i'm steve okino this is history in the hand metal detecting i'm here in north central pennsylvania and uh, we're just taking advantage of of some of the old sites in the area see what we can find metal detecting so come on along our plan is to ride a bike in um, of course i'll ride the bike mac will run along because he's younger than i am anyway we'll see you later come on along this old rail bed get to a spot where there is a foundation and what looks like kind of a flat area so gonna see what we can find okay so this would be the flat area that would be an old apple tree and that, where Mac is, would be the foundation. Cool beans. Yep. All right. What a gorgeous day. It's a little bit windier than I thought, but, oh, look at that. That's great. All right, let's get digging. This was my little lashing to get in here. It's hard biking with stuff. There's my, there's my healthy lunch of an apple, some water, and of course bugles, because any day that doesn't have bugles in it could have been a better day. I got my Simplex, uh, gonna be working on park one, and not full sensitivity, but down one. That's where we'll work today. He's turned on. Four out of five battery bars. That's great. On to the first hole. Oh, that's a big honking nail. That's a big one. Still waiting for some high tones, but we'll see what we can find. Oh boy, big iron. That's interesting. That could be anything. That almost looks like it was for the link of a chain and it was a great big hook. I'm guessing that this, I'm guessing that this was um, late 1800s um, just for a short time. So maybe to 1914 or whatever. Uh, that's when the mine down the road closed down. So we'll keep looking. Hmm. Well, not sure exactly what that was. That's, that's our first high tone. We love it. There's so much iron around here. And uh, right over there, I would say, uh, was uh, the privy. What do we have here? Oop, shotgun brass. WR Co. Number 12. Rival. It can't be Winchester Remington. I'll have to look that up. An old 12 gauge shotgun brass. All right, on to the next. I found a, a thing. Looks like some kind of bearing race or something. All right, on to the next. ID already. That is chain. 
interesting but not valuable. I do notice something about this, that this chain dragged along the ground. By looking at the links, you can see how very smooth they are on one side um, and not the other. So, interesting. I'll bet you this was, I'll bet you that was dragged along behind mine cars or something because it's a very interesting wear pattern. Could be more of the same. What a nice day this is, my goodness. Uh huh. Found ourselves a horseshoe. Well, I see the familiar shape of a broken axe. So, judging from the shortness of the blade, from where the handle went through, this was uh, sharpened and used beyond the high carbon steel that was on the very edge and it got into the it got into the cheap steel which just needs to be heavy um, and then it probably was used as a splitting wedge or something and busted so that's pretty cool iron 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 but uh where's where's my uh where's my brass and copper and silver it's a modified D-buckle, probably off horse tack. Launch time. This is not panning out. It's just a bunch of iron here. I, I have a feeling this wasn't a residence. I think it, it was uh, more just observation or something. Seems like it's between two rail beds. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to head up that very old narrow uh, rail bed and see what I can find up there. It could be that there was, it could be there was another um, very small mine up there. That's where we're headed after lunch. Beautiful day. I changed my mind. I just talked with some uh, some folks I sent here to explore around and they told me that they found some additional cellar holes um, where Ryan and I rode our bikes into the other day at the Klondike mine. So um, I think I'm going to ride on in there and uh, see if I can find those foundations. Well, a little bit weird. Sitting here minding my own business. And a big buzzard comes flying over, <laughs> flying over up through the, the trees looking down at me. I, I, I hope I was moving enough. I hope he didn't get any ideas. I mean, I know I'm getting older, but am I ready for the buzzards? I don't think so. All right. We're going to finish up our, our apple, hop on the bike, and uh, we'll do further exploration at the actual mine site and get away from this. I mean, it's cool that this is a, a foundation, but there just isn't much here. So um, I'm gonna get to where more people were and more time was spent. That's better digging ground. Well, all right. Made it into where we were the other day. You can see the, um, the retention pond down there that they're treating for um, reducing the acidity of the mine runoff. Park my bike right down there, and uh, I'm headed up here. I can already see um, additional foundations uh, right up there. So come on, let's see if we can get into some high tones, I hope. Come on, Mackie. Okay, I was standing right there when I said, come on, let's see if we can get some high tones, and I went 10 feet, and I got into a high tone. So we found some sort of a finial, um, but that is cool. Look at that, very ornate. I'm guessing that was brass. Boy, it's just hanging on by a thread. 
right there. But that's cool. All right. We haven't even gotten to the foundations. We already found something buried on the old road. On to the next. Kind of cool. A little copper or brass top. It says S T. And it had a little handle right there and had a hinge right there. So it was for opening some sort of tin. It looks like there's a, a little something that would close it right there. Oh, I love all these foundations. Wow. There's one right here. There's another one up there. So we're into it now. That looks like the plates. Yes, it is. These were the plates of a pocket. So, no wonder we had such a high tone. So, the blades would have been in between these. Uh, so, that's, that's an old pocket watch. I guess there's more in here still. See what else we can find. Maybe we can find the blades. I think I see them right there. Eesh. No, no. So this is this this would be the spring on the inside. That's interesting. Very interesting. Love it. So yeah, pocket knives came out of pockets. There's another one of the plates. Cool. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that is a miner's lamp that was worn down in the mine. Or what's left of it. Oh, that is cool. There's the adjustment. Oh, oh that is cool. Well, that makes sense. Old coal mine. There's the igniter. And it would have lit gas. Yep. It would have lit gas that came up out of the tank here. Um, oh, that is nifty. I don't see any brand that I can see, but, oh, that is, that's cool. Old miner's lamp. Wicked cool. There is the old inner plate of a clock that may actually have a brand on it right there. Could just be some scratches, but could also be, yeah, I think that's just scratches. Cool. What time is it? It's too late to tell now. <laughs> A little bit of history right in the hand. Love it. That is a clock gear right there. And uh, that is a nice little piece of history for us to hold right in our hand. History in the hand, that's why we do this. It's not worth anything, but it's a great piece of history from a community that used to live and survive based on this small coal mine. So that is nifty. On to the next. What do we find, Mackie, huh? What do we find, Mackie, huh? All right, so this is the second one of these that I've found with the little, the little like frowny face over holes here. And I just, I don't know what to make of it. Um, I can't tell whether that was blue um, it's non-ferrous, so it's copper or brass. 
Um, it, it almost looks copper. Don't know what that is. If you know what that is, let me know. It sure put up a phenomenal signal and it was buried way down there under a bunch of rocks. So I'm keeping it just to, just to uh, make it worth my uh, digging so hard. So I, I was trying to make it into a, the back of a clock. Uh, like maybe those were things that you could wind up or adjust or something. The, the, little, the little face, the little frowny face might have been a faster or slower adjustment. I just don't know. Anyway, on to the next. Well, there it is. And it's big and it's deep. But I don't know if I can get it out of there. Huh. Non ferrous. Non identified. I have no idea. Unless that was a parasol handle. That, is, that would be my only guess. And it's just spitballing. If you think you know, let me know. After all this digging through roots, it's got to be something noble. All right, on to the next. What do you say, Mackie? Huh? Because of the very heavy weight, I can tell that that's lead. And you can see the can see where it was just poured into the ground. <laughs> oh well, it's good to get that out of the ground. On to the next. Well, I got, uh, I got everything strapped on my back. It is time to head back down the road. The railroad, as they say. Mac is ready to go. When we get back out, we'll take a look at what we found. We are we're back out to the truck. Let's take a look at what we found. And uh, it was it was kind of interesting. Uh, not a single coin, but we did find this big copper thing, which I suspect may possibly have been the back of a clock, but I don't really know. We found a really cool miner's... Um, a miner's lamp. We found this, which I believe was the bottom of a parasol. We found those knife parts. We found a big blob of lead and a traction, uh, uh, traction thing for walking in the winter. Found a buckle, a WR Company 12 gauge shotgun, brass, a really old rifle shell. We found that finial. Um, which is just kind of cool, and we found the plate uh, of a clock and one of the gears, and then we found this uh, ST thing, which had a uh, had a little uh, thing that turned and latched it shut. So, not really sure what that was all about, but I do know that we found it. We got some history right in our hand. So, also found a horseshoe. Uh, a little piece of drag chain and what I think was um, part of a great big hook that uh, came up against something it, it uh, wasn't strong enough for. So thanks for coming along. This is Steve reminding you that if you're not looking for it, you're not going to find it and we'll see you next time right here on History in the Hand and I will probably have my new glasses so I won't have to wear two pair just to see. <laughs> Catch you next time. Yes. I mean, I know I'm getting older, but am I ready for the buzzards? I don't think so.